Welcome everyone, and my name is Alina Mishnak, and I am part of the Ensemble Outreach team, and I will be giving the webinar today on um, studying genes and genomes with Ensemble Genome Browser. Um, so the objectives of today's webinar is that we're going to talk about what Ensemble is, um, how you can navigate the Ensemble Genome Browser. So we will go on to the um, Ensemble website, and I'll show you where you can find different types of data, um, also how you can search and visualize different types of data, how you can configure and customize a page, and how you can export data from Ensemble. Finally, we'll also talk about how you can find help and support in Ensemble. To start with, I'm going to uh, just give you a little bit of a background. So. The first genome was sequenced in 1977 by Fred Sanger and his team. And this was a bacteriophage genome of about 5,000 bases. And this is what then paved the way um, for the sequencing of the human genome, which is a much larger genome of about 3 billion bases in 2004. And since then, many other genomes have been added to Ensemble as well. So why do we need genome browsers? Um, genomes are big and they contain a lot of data. And if you were to look at the genomic data or the sequencing data, it can look a bit like this. So this is just a string of letters of genetic code on my slide. Um, if you were to just look at this data, it doesn't really make any sense. In order to make sense of this data, we need to work with this data and we need to annotate it. And this is what genome browsers do. So Ensemble is a type of genome browser and it annotates and maps genomic features from genome sequences. Ensemble is also called added value resource, which means that it brings together information from a wide range of other databases, all of it, and makes it available um, in a single site. So, Genomes and gene builds are the primary data type that we have in Ensemble, and we have more than 300 species um, available in Ensemble. We also have variation data, comparative genomics data. So these, is, these include whole genome alignments, gene trees, and also homologs. So these could be orthologs and paralogs. We have regulatory builds. So we also show you where um, in the genome, you can find regulatory elements such as promoters and enhancers. And then we also allow data export. So we allow you to export data tables from Ensemble using Biomart. Uh, you can also use VEP, which is variant effect predictor, um, to process your own data. So this is, um, um, this is a tool that you can use to annotate your own variants. You also have the choice of displaying your own data in Ensemble. And then you also have programmatic access to our data via our APIs. Most importantly, Ensemble is completely free, so it's open source, and we provide access to our whole genome files via our FTP site and also GitHub. So I mentioned previously just about uh, the different ways that you can access Ensemble data. So you can access it one by one through the browser, you also have the option to access our data in bulk via Perl API and MySQL, or you can access custom data tables via, via Biomart, REST API, and VEP, which is Variant Effect Predictor. And then you also have access to our whole genome flat files via our FTP site. And I'll show you where you can find the FTP site when I move on to the demo. So in Ensemble, we have about 300 vertebrate species, but we also host a few non-vertebrate species. So this is worm, housefly, and um, yeast. So these species are available because of historic purposes, but also comparative purposes as well. They're also the most um, commonly used model organisms. So we do display data on these species in Ensemble. If you're interested in non-vertebrate species, then we also have Ensemble Genomes, which is our sister site. And you can find different taxa on Ensemble Genomes. So we have Ensemble Plants, 
ensemble metazoa. Uh, we have a um, ensemble website dedicated to bacteria, protists, fungi, and then we also have a site dedicated to COVID-19. So this is the um, annotation for the genome of SARS-CoV-2. All of these um, sites follow the same logic and organization as the main ensemble site. So ensemble works on a release cycle. So as I mentioned previously, that there is a lot of work that is being done on um, se new sequencing techniques and lots of new sequencing data for different species is becoming available quite rapidly. Um, so to keep our data up to date, we work on a release cycle. So the current release in Ensemble is Ensemble 110. Uh, this was released in July. Um, so with every release, we add um, new genome assemblies, we update our softwares, we update our gene set, uh, we perform new analysis on um, uh, the new data such as comparative genomics data or variation data. Um, also the regulation data is updated and then we package all of this up and then we make it available on all of our interfaces. As I mentioned that the previous release um, or the current release is Ensemble 110 and then we're working on the new release which is 111 and this is expected to be released in either late November or December. But this means that if you were to, for example, come back to Ensemble in a few months time, so if you were to come back to Ensemble in January, the data there might not be the same. Therefore, it's crucial to remember the release or the version of Ensemble that you're working with. And if you would like to keep your data consistent, then you can always go back to the release that you were working with in the past by accessing our archives. Um, our archives are previous versions of Ensemble that are frozen in time for up to five years, and I will show you how you can access the archives in the demo. Um, apart from the main Ensemble site and Ensemble genomes, we also have Ensemble Rapid Release. So again, because um, new species, so the sequencing data is becoming available for new species, especially with um, new projects such as Darwin Tree of Life. Um, they're rapidly producing new sequencing data. So we also have Ensemble Rapid Release, which is sort of like a um, lightweight version of Ensemble. So it has um, genomes with gene annotation. Um, we support some of our tools like BLAST. We also have some comparative analysis that are gradually being rolled out for um, a few species. However, we don't support um, other functionalities like Biomart or variation data on there. But if you are interested in a new species data um, that has been sequenced and you would like, um, and you're interested in the annotation data for it, you will be able to find that through our Ensemble Rapid Release. Furthermore, uh, the current human genome assembly that we have in Ensemble is the latest um, genome assembly, which is GRC838. So it is most up to date and most supported. However, we also support the previous human genome assembly, which is GRC837. It does have some gaps um, when you compare it to the current human genome assembly. However, we still host it. Um, in Ensemble, you can find it on grch37.ensemble.org. Um, it does have some limited data. Um, however, since it is the um, preferable or the most um, popular genome assembly that is being used in the clinical community, therefore we still um, display it in Ensemble. We host even the older um, human genome assembly, which is NCBI 36. However, it is quite poor. It has a lot of gaps and we do not update the data there. So I'm going to move on to the demonstration now. And we are going to look at the Ensemble homepage, uh, where we'll look at how you can find information about the different species and the genome assemblies in Ensemble, 
And then we're also going to look at a specific region on the human genome. So I have the region mentioned over here. So this is on chromosome four. Um, so the way that the ensemble um, coordinate format works is that we have the chromosome number, which is uh, followed by the start position hyphen the end position. So we're going to look at this specific um, region on the human genome, and I'll show you how you can manipulate the view to add more data that you might be interested in. So I'm going to jump out of my presentation now. And I am going to go to ensemble.org. So you can access Ensemble by typing www.ensemble.org in your browser. And this takes me to the Ensemble homepage. So to start with, we have the blue navigation bar at the top of the page. And this is where you can find some of our most popular tools, such as BLAST, VEP, which is Variant Effect Predictor that you can use to annotate your own variants. And then we also have a link to Biomarked over here. Um, further on, where it says Downloads, if you were to click on this, this is where you can find the links to our FTP site. We also have help and docs. Um, so there is a lot of help and documentation available in Ensemble. Um, there's loads of video tutorials available. So if you're unsure about a um, specific data type or a specific tool, definitely refer to help and docs where you can find information on how to use a certain tool or the background data on some of our um, data types. We also have a link to our blog which is where you can find information on any new updates that are coming about. So this is where you will find information also on the new releases. So we will um, we will have an intentions blog, which basically tells you what to expect in the new release. And then once we have published our new version of Ensemble, uh, we will release another blog, which shows you every update that has been made with the new version. You can also find some articles on um, the people behind the Ensemble projects so or developers and bioinformaticians. And then you can also um, sometimes find um, opportunities for internships or new jobs that are coming about. Um, then on the right hand side, you'll notice that we have this um, summary over here about the Ensemble Genome Browser. Um, then we also have the Ensemble release version. So as I mentioned, we are on Ensemble release 110, which was published in July 2023. We have some bullet points on the updates that were brought about with this new version. And then we have a link to the Ensemble rapid release site, which is again um, an Ensemble site that is updated every two weeks with new genomes. And then if I scroll further down, you'll see that we have this link over here that says view in archive site. And if I was to click on this link, it's going to open a menu that is going to show you all of the previous versions of Ensemble that are frozen in time for up to five years. And you can also find a link here to the Ensemble GRCH 37 website. So this is the previous human genome assembly. I'm not going to go to any of the archives for now, so I'm just going to jump out of this menu by either clicking this tick option or anywhere outside the menu. So I'm going to scroll back up, and the next thing that I want to quickly show you is Ensemble Genomes. So I'm just going to open a new tab, and I'm just going to type in EnsembleGenomes.org. And this takes me to the Ensemble Genomes website. And as I mentioned, this is uh, divided by taxa. So you can find Ensemble plants, Ensemble metazoa, protists, fungi, and bacteria here. So this website, Ensemble Genomes, is dedicated to non-vertebrates. Let's close this for now. Um, so we're back on the Ensemble homepage you'll notice that we have two search options over here. So we have this corner search option on the right-hand side of the page. 
um, anything that you search over here is going to give you results across all species. So you can search for gene name or you can search for um, a phenotype, for example, um, and then it's going to give you results across all species. If you want species specific results, then you can focus on the search option that's on the center of the page. So for example, from this drop down menu, you can choose the species that you're interested in. I'm going to click human, and then you can type in your gene name, phenotype, coordinates, um, or a variant that you might be interested in. If I scroll further down, you'll notice that we have this section over here uh, that is uh, for genomes. So we have our favorite genomes over here that are set to human, mouse, and zebra fish by default. You do have the option to change your favorite genomes by clicking on this pen icon. However, you will need to create an ensemble account of which is completely free to create and you don't get any correspondence from us. If you would like to view the full list of all species, you can click on view full list of all species just over here. So I'm going to click on this. And this is going to show me a table of all the vertebrate species that we have in Ensemble. So you'll see that the table is quite huge. Um, you do have the option to filter this table. Um, so this filter option is available on the top of the table on the right hand side. And you also have the option to export this table by clicking on this Excel icon. So if I filter this table, let's say by human. So I have my human species over here. In the first column, we have the common name. Then we have the scientific name, which is Homo sapiens. We have the taxon ID, the current ensemble assembly that's available. We also have the GCSA, GCA accession code, the gene build method, and then we have indication on uh, whether we have the variation and the regulation data available for this species. So Y would indicate yes, and then if it's a um, if it's a hyphen, then it means that we don't have that data for this species. You can find out further information about um, a specific species by clicking on the common name. So I'm going to do that for human. And if I click on this, this is now going to take me to the um, species specific page. In this case, this is for human. Again, Anything that you search over here using the search option is going to give you results that is going to be human specific. Next, we have some example pages for genome assembly, comparative genomics, regulation, gene annotation, and variation. If you would like to find out further information about, the, um, about this genome assembly, you can click on more information and statistics. So this is just over here and where it says genome assembly. I'm going to click on more information and statistics. And over here, you can find further information about the assembly. And also on the right hand side, you can find some summary statistics. So for example, we have the base pair length, the assembly provider, which is Genome Reference Consortium, so GRC. Um, annotation provider, the annotation was done by Ensemble. Um, you can also find information on gene counts, such as coding genes and non-coding genes and pseudogenes and gene transcripts. I'm going to go back to the homepage by clicking on this Ensemble logo. So wherever you are in Ensemble, you'll always have this blue navigation bar available on the page. And then if you would like to go back to the homepage, you can just click on the Ensemble logo. So what I'm going to quickly show you before we move on to the specific region is let's search for a specific gene. So I'm going to search for the human BRCA2 gene. So I can just type the gene name here. So I've selected my species and I've typed my gene name. Once I'm happy with the information that I've provided, I can click on go. And I have my search results over here. 
and I'm going to click on BRCA2 human gene. And this takes me to the gene tab. So the gene tab, so Ensemble's data is uh, divided in a tab system. So where you can have a gene tab, a transcript tab, or a variant tab, or location tab, and so on. The gene tab gives us information on uh, the gene name. So we have our gene name here, which is BRCA2. We have the ensemble stable ID that is associated with this gene name. We have the description for the name, for the gene, uh, the gene synonym. So these are the names that this gene was previously known as. Then we have the location where this gene falls in. So this is on chromosome 13, and then we have the coordinates and it falls on the forward strand. We also have information about this gene, that this gene has 15 transcripts, 174 orthologs, and it is associated with 129 phenotypes. Underneath uh, this summary, we also have, uh, sorry, underneath this um, these information, we also have a transcript table. So these are all of the transcripts that are associated with the BRCA2 gene. So in Ensemble, a gene is a collection of transcripts. And then we give you information on all of the transcripts that are associated with a specific gene. You'll notice on the right-hand side, we have some gene-based displays. So you can explore this gene further. For example, you can look at the sequence of this gene. You can look at some comparative genomics information uh, by clicking on comparative genomics, gene tree, uh, we have orthologs, we have information for ontologies, and then we also have information on genetic variation. So for example, if you were to click on variant table, which is, so on this left-hand side, if you click on variant table, it's going to give you information on all of the variants. So this is just loading, but um, it's going to give you information on all of the variants that fall within the BRCA2 gene. I'm going to move on. Um, okay, it has loaded. So this is what the table would look like. So we have all of these different variant IDs that fall within our BRCA2 gene. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm now going to go back to the Ensemble homepage and from my presentation, I'm going to copy these coordinates. And now I'm going to search for these coordinates in the human genome. So from this drop down menu, let's select human. And now in the search option, I'm going to paste in my coordinates. And now I'm going to click on go. So this takes me to the location tab. So the location tab shows me where I am uh, or where the coordinates that I've searched for are in the context of the genome. So this tab is composed of three views. Um, so firstly, we have our chromosome view. Then we have our region in detail view. So this is, um, you'll notice that um, it has this red box over here in the second view. And this basically shows me that this is a specific region that I have searched for. You can also see that this red box is available on the chromosome view as well. So it's basically the region that I'm interested in. So the region that I've searched for. Um, each view is more uh, sort of like a more zoomed in version of the last so you'll see that we have this chromosome view over here, and then we have this region in detail view, which basically shows us a bit more detail, a bit more zoomed in version of the um, area that we have searched for. And if we scroll further down, this is our entire red box. So this is only our region of interest. And you can see that we have some transcripts over here that overlap this region. By default, we don't show you all of the information um, as then this page would take a really long time to load, but you do have the option to go to configure this page 
on the left hand side. And then from here, you can see all of the data tracks that are already turned on. So this is all of the data that we show you by default. So we show you data on genes and transcripts, variations, regulation data, comparative genomics data. But then you can also select some further specific kind of data that you would like to display on these images. So you can choose from um, some variation data, such as structural variants, um, regulation data, some comparative genomics. You can also um, select for some um, repeat regions to be viewed along the genome and so on. I'm just going to close this menu for now. And then you also have the option to add custom tracks. So these are publicly available tracks. Um, you can also um, export data. Um, so if I click on export data on this left-hand side, so it's this blue button. And then from here, you can basically choose uh, the output that you would like. So you can choose from faster sequence, bed format, comma separated, tab separated, GTF, GFF, and so on. We also have some flat file options as well. You can select the location. Um, that you're interested in, and you can also choose the flagging sequence at five prime and three prime end. If I click on next, from here, you can choose the output format for your export in HTML text and compressed text. We're not going to export anything for now, so I'm just going to jump out of my presentation, sorry, jump out of this menu. The last thing that I would like to quickly show you is our FTP site. So if you were to click on downloads, so on the navigation bar at the top, I'm going to click on downloads. So from here, you can see the different ways that you can access the ensemble data. So you can um, um, access small quantities of data by clicking on export buttons on the different pages that you're looking at in ensemble. There's also fast programmatic access via REST API. Um, and then you also have complete data sets and databases available via our FTP site. And the link to the FTP site is just over here. Um, the entire databases are also available uh, via FTP as MySQL dumps, if you are um, interested in using that. So if I click on FTP site, you can find all of our databases over here. Okay, so I've reached the end of my demonstration. Uh, before I move on to q and I'm just going to um, go through some closing remarks. So we've spoken about um, what genome browsers do. So as I mentioned that genomic data is large and it is constantly changing. So genome browsers are used to integrate this updated genomic information. Um, it can include annotation of location and structures of the genes and variation data, expression and predictions, and then genome browsers are where you go um, to get information about the genomic features, such as um, genes and variations, regulation features, and so on. In Ensemble, uh, we have genomic features. Uh, we add genomic features to genome sequence and we perform our own analysis to data as well. Ensemble is also an added value resource, which means that it brings together information from a wide range of resources, all in a single site. It's important to remember that different genome browsers use the same reference genome, but they can have different gene annotation methods. So you can sometimes find some differences between, for example, if you're using NCBI or Ensemble. And then Ensemble integrates gene annotation, variation, comparative genomics, and regulation data. All of this data is organized in our browser sites. So we have the main website, which I've just gone through. But as I mentioned, um, you can also find GRCH37. So this is the website that is dedicated to the previous human genome assembly. We have Ensemble Genomes. 
which is our sister site, which is dedicated to non-vertebrates. And then we also have our archives, which are previous versions of Ensemble that are frozen in time for up to five years. You can also export um, Ensemble data uh, by using Biomart. And then we also have uh, open source um, access to Ensemble databases via Perl API, REST API, and MySQL. And then you can find the link to our FTP site by referring to this um, slide. And I will share my slides um, um, on the training page as well. So if you have enjoyed the webinar um, and if you have found it useful, then uh, we also do a, a browser course. So this is like a one day course that goes um, through the all of the data types that are available in Ensemble. Um, so it's a bit more in depth and um, there's a lot of exercises and demonstrations that we will go through together on in the browser course. We also have our REST API course, uh, which goes through how you can use the Ensemble REST API to um, uh, retrieve specific types of data that you're interested in. And this course is focused at bioinformatations. Um, we can teach uh, Ensemble courses at any institutes. Um, if you would like to host us, then please do get in touch with us on helpdesk at ensemble.org. Um, I would also like to mention over here that um, if you would like to um, see um, or keep up to date with our upcoming courses, then you can refer to our training page um, and I will share the link with that uh, link for that in the Zoom chat in a bit. But the upcoming course that we have, which could be quite interesting, is on um, interpreting the effects of genetic variants on protein structure and function. So this is a collaboration between Ensemble, Uniprod, PDBE, and AlphaFold. Um, so the course is taking place on the 30th of November. And then the deadline for this course, um, if you would like to apply for this course, is the, I think it's the 12th of November, but I'm just going to go onto the page for the course now. Um, so you can see that this is what the, course page looks like, and then you can find information on how to register and application closes on the 12th of November. Um, you can keep up to date with any new Ensemble information uh, via Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can also um, keep up to date with any of our um, news and jobs by referring to our blog, which is on www.ensemble.info. There is a lot of help and documentation that is available to you on Ensemble, but also API pages. So you can find lots of video tutorials on YouTube and Yuku, um, some flash animations as well. Um, if you have some specific questions and if you still can't find the answers um, or the solutions that you're looking for, please do get in touch with us on helpdesk at ensemble.org. You can also join our public mailing list, which is dev at ensemble.org and announce at ensemble.org to keep up to date with any new data that is coming about. If you do use Ensemble, please do cite us. Um, you can cite us by using the latest Ensemble publication. Um, and I've uh, mentioned this here on my slide. It just helps us um, sort of understand how people are using our resources and who is using our resources. So we can take all of that data and make Ensemble better. So I would just like to acknowledge here the Ensemble team um, who make all of this uh, project possible and also our funding bodies. And I'm ready to take any questions now. So the first question I can read is, uh, which transcript should be selected for a particular gene? Okay, that is a very good question. Um, I think this would depend on the context of your research as well, because different transcripts um, are expressed differently in different cell types, but we also uh, do make it easier. So if I just, for example, if I use the example of BRCA2 gene, and you'll notice here that 
Um, so I'm on the gene tab for BRCA2. And if I select show transcript table, you'll see that we have 15 different transcripts for this BRCA2 gene. Uh, we have uh, their base pair length here, their amino acid length, biotypes, and then we have matches for CCDS, Uniprot, and also RefSeq match. And then in the last column, we have these flags. So these flags are basically sort of like, um, they, they're different fact or different algorithms that take into account different factors to give transcripts a score. So if you would like to take a transcript for further study, then you have the option to choose from, for example, main select. So main select is a flag that stands for matched annotation from NCBI and Embel ABI. So NCBI is just another genome browser. So this is a collaboration between Ensemble transcript, um, so and also the RefSeq transcript, which is the transcript set from NCBI. So this is the default transcript per human gene. So it is the most representative of biology. It's most well supported. It's um, highly expressed and highly conserved. And this is a 100% match between Ensemble and RefSeq. Uh, we also have Ensemble Canonical. So for humans, main select is going to match Ensemble Canonical. So again, this is a single transcript that is the most conserved, most highly expressed, and it has the high, longest coding sequence. And this is um, also represented in other resources such as NCBI and Uniprot. So basing, so based on this information, if you would like to take a transcript for the study, then I would advise you to choose a transcript that has the main select flag, or it is an ensemble canonical. Um, so as I mentioned, main select is only available for human uh, uh, right now, whereas ensemble canonical is available for all species in ensemble. And then there is a question about um, how to find CPG sites on a particular gene promoter. Um, so we do have the option to display CPG sites on the location tab. So if I just go to the location tab, Whenever you open a gene tab, the location tab is going to become available by default. So you can toggle between the two. I'm going to click on the location tab. And I'm going to click on configure this page. So this is on the right hand side. It's the sorry on the left hand side. It's this blue button that says configure this page. So this is where you can basically add further data to the view on the location tab. Um, I can You can either choose the different data tracks that are available here on the left-hand side. So you can sort of click on, um, if I click on repeat region over here, for example, so you can click on all these um, categories that are available on the left-hand side and then choose a data track that you're interested in, or you can also search for a data track um, in this search option over here. So I'm going to select um, type CPG and my search options, sorry, search results are available over here in this main view. And you can see that my search results show um, some CPG islands data track. And to, then to turn this data track on, I can just click on this box that is next to it and then I can select on. And now if I save and close this menu by clicking on this tick option, it's now going to load my image to then show me the CPG data as well along the genome. I'm not going to wait for this data to load because sometimes it can take a bit, a bit of time and then that's going to take away um, time from our Q&A. Um, so, okay, um, another question is about linkage disequilibrium. Um, okay, so you can, we do have a tool for linkage disequilibrium. Um, if you go to tools, which is on the blue navigation bar at the top, 
over here, uh, we can find various different tools that you can use to process your data. Um, I've mentioned web previously, we have BLAST, but then you'll also see we have this linkage disequilibrium calculator over here that you can use to calculate linkage disequilibrium between variants using genotypes from a selected population. If I just click on this, um, you can see, um, it's just loading. You can see that we have our job form over here that you can um, fill out. And then if you would like further information on how to use this tool, um, all, most of the pages in Ensemble have this question mark icon. So if you're lost somewhere or if you're not sure how to use a certain tool or what it is, what the data is that you're seeing on the pages, you can click on this question mark option and then it's going to take you through um, the different data or how to use the tool. Um, just like you see on this page over here, it gives you information on the input, how you can run the job and um, what the different results would mean. So I hope that helps. Um, is there any relationship between Ensemble and NCBI? Um, yes, so as I mentioned um, in my slide uh, previously, that the reference genome that these uh, the different browsers use is the same. However, depending on the different genome browsers, their annotation method might be different. So for example, UCSC might be different to Ensemble or NCBI might be different to Ensemble. Um, so that's where the different um, um, sort of like differences would lie, but the reference genome that all of these browsers use are the same. And then it's just the information that you find on all of these genome browsers is going to be displayed differently. In Ensemble, we give you quite a lot of comprehensive information on the different genomes. So, um, for example, as I showed you, we give you information um, on the um, on where the different variants fall. Um, uh, we give you information on the um, sort of like, if I go on to the gene page, for example, over here um, for the BRCA2 again, um, we give you information on um, what the sequence would look like, the comparative genomics information. So gene trees, you can view that in Ensemble, you can view um, orthologs that are associated with um, a specific gene that you're interested in, phenotypes, um, variation data, um, gene expression data, molecular interactions, lots of regulation data is available as well, um, not just for human, but also for mouse and some agricultural species. Um, and then we also um, have this external references page, which um, you might find useful which is where we show you where our gene or transcript that you're interested in corresponds to in other databases. And then we link you out to other databases as well.